afternoon and assalamualaikum to everyone. Apa khabar semua? Saya Mimi. I'm a Thermomix user for the past two years. Pengguna Thermomix selama dua tahun dan juga team manager. Okay, hari ni Mimi akan share cara nak buat kek batik. Lepas tu pagi tadi tengok-tengok dalam fridge ada tak ada susu pekat pula. Jadi hari ni Mimi akan tambah resipi satu lagi, susu pekat. Maknanya kita akan buat susu pekat dulu. Bila dah siap susu pekat tu, kita akan buat kek batik kita. Okay, dah bersedia? Is, uh, are you ready everyone? Today we're going to do two recipes. I, I was planning to make um, kek batik. But when I checked the ingredients this morning, I realized that I didn't have any condensed milk, which is an essential ingredient for the kek batik. And so I decided to add today condensed milk as well. Okay, let's get started. Uh, recipe susu pekat tu ada di dalam setiap TM6. Every TM6 comes with two cookbooks and one of them is our favorites and in there we can find the recipe for condensed milk or susu pekat. So it's right here and as usual we click on this arrow right here and it will show us the ingredients and the steps. Kita uh, tap dekat uh, pangkah tu and then dia akan tunjuk dia punya bahan-bahan dengan cara uh, penyediaan susu pekat ok, so bahan-bahan dah siap dah pun, so kita start cooking tap macam tu je, macam handphone just like any other smartphone, you just tap lightly on the screen and we start off, of course, with an empty bowl so nak tunjuk je lah kita punya mixing bowl ni masih kosong belum ada apa-apa dan uh, first ingredient adalah unsalted butter 40 gram, 40 grams of unsalted butter and um, we're going to use the built-in weighing scale kalau dia punya weighing scale tu menunjukkan uh, angka lain kita tekan tear when we tap on tear, it will reset to zero ok, so kita nak 40 gram unsalted butter the reason why we use unsalted is we can control the salt content of whatever we're cooking so bila resipi tu tak sebut apa-apa by default kita mesti guna butter yang tidak mengandungi garam jadi kita boleh kontrol berapa banyak garam kita letak ok, so 40 gram butter 125 gram air 125 grams of water I measured already but yeah, we have a weighing scale, why not? and then next so sekarang disuruh tutup so we're gonna cover it we tap on next and it's gonna mix and cook for the next three minutes Varoma speed 2 3 minutes Varoma kelajuan nombor 2 so kita boleh tinggalkan dia so sambil tu kita siapkan kita punya um, baking tin kita punya loyang walaupun benda ni kita tak, tak bakar tapi kena uh, benda ni kan melekit so it's a bit sticky so we need to use our non-stick paper and um, I'm using 8x8 no, 7x7 tin ok, 7x7 dan cara Mimi buat is uh, lipat je so tengok lipat dia sebelah macam ni lepas tu lipat lagi macam main origami pula ok let me see if it fits or not Okay, cantik ngam-ngam. It fits just nicely. And then we fold the two other ends. So how do we do the corners? What do I do? Normally, I will just take this flap and fold the corner like that. Nampak tak? Sini. And then I fold the other end just like this. And I do the same for this side. So, kalau ada lebih tu, kita lipat dia keluar macam ni. If any extra, so you fold it outward so that it will stay in place. So, cantik dia kita punya loyang. Okay, lepas tu kita letak tepi. Dan sambil tu, kita ambil kita punya bahan-bahan yang lain. We're going to get the rest of our ingredients for our condensed milk which is uh, raw sugar tak ada raw sugar tak apa 
Gula biasa pun boleh. I happen to be using today the Marrera. The Marrera is a kind of um, organic sugar, slightly better than white sugar, but it's still sugar in the end. So up to you what kind of sugar you want to use. So sugar, and then full cream milk powder. There are many types in, in, in the market, up to you what you want to use, but I would recommend full cream milk powder because the other types have all sorts of additives in it. Sebab tu susu yang lain murah, tapi full cream jarang sangat ada sale. Sebab tak banyak dia punya filler atau tambahan dalam tu. Okay, lepas tu, last sekali, kita punya pinch of salt, garam. So, I always like to use pink Himalayan rock salt, garam bukit. Sebab sekarang ni, bila pollution dah banyak, um, even sea salt is um, has been found to have uh, microplastic. Agak menyedihkan lah sebab garam dari laut pun dah contaminated dah. Dah ada, dah ada plastik, dah mengandungi plastik sekarang. Sambil tu kita boleh relax lah lama, 6 saat. Sekejap je kan, 3 minit tu kan. So dia kira dia panaskan air tu sambil dia cairkan butter dengan dia cairkan... Uh, Oh ah, yeah, butter je lah, butter dengan air tadi kan? Ah, okay. So ni, this part is the most amazing part Because after this, we will add these ingredients and it will just mix and we're done Okay, and now we're just going to add our sugar Kita masukkan kita punya gula Kalau nak tengok, tengok lah, tak ada apa sangat Haa, ah, dia melt je So, kita masukkan kita punya gula And then, we're gonna add our milk powder pinch of salt secubit garam kita tutup dia and it will mix for 30 seconds on speed 10 dia akan kacau selama 10 saat 30 saat kelajuan nombor 10 ok sambil tu kita siapkan kita punya bekas untuk susu kita Simpan dalam fridge sampai kita uh, nak ni Until we're ready to use it That's it, super easy Dan ini dah kira Kos dia lebih kurang sama je Kalau kita beli kat luar Sebab kalau beli kat luar tu Kebanyakan susu pekat sekarang bukan susu pun Kebanyakan krima je Dan krima tu mengandungi gula Banyak dan uh, Minyak Minyak kelapa sawit so it made me think that it doesn't cost it, it costs about the same but with with by making it myself i know exactly what, what goes into it i know what kind of milk i use i know what kind of sugar and how much sugar and it costs about the same anyway so might as well i make myself and give something better to my family so would you knowingly feed your family a mixture of sugar and oil tak kan so, tengok kita punya susu pekat ni. Banyak boleh dapat. So, we're gonna get a jar of this. And it tastes amazing. You should try it. Memang sedap sangat. Lain sangat. So, susu pekat ni kita boleh guna untuk teh tarik. Makan dengan roti pun boleh. And you can use it fresh as and when you need it. So, kita tahu benda ni dia tak ada... Pengawet, no preservatives. And because we are making cake batik shortly, we don't need to clean this really, really well. But I'm just going to clean so that you'll see the yield. Saja nak tunjuk banyak mana kita boleh dapat dengan bahan sebanyak tu. So we get a lot from that amount of uh, water, sugar, and milk. And I'm not going to wash my bowl because after this we're going to make cake batik. This is our susu pekat. 
but I go by first in first out so the one that I made this morning I will use the one I made this morning and we proceed with our cake batte okay so for the cake batte we need butter and then we're gonna need of course susu pekat and um, the recipe okay butter is 200 grams Susu pekat is uh, 180, wait, 125, and then um, our cocoa powder is, uh, it's not cocoa powder, the recipe, original recipe, it's, by the way, the original recipe is from Catherine Lim. Thank you, Catherine, for your recipe, best sangat. I'm sure you'll get a lot of blessings for sharing such a wonderful and simplified recipe to everyone. And this one, the original actually uses um, 200 grams of uh, Milo. Milo powder, but I noticed that a Milo recipe has changed along the years and I find it too sweet for my taste right now. So I've been using lately Vico, and even then, I mix 150 grams of Vico with 50 grams of unsweetened cocoa powder. So it's less sweet and at the same time, it's more chocolatey. So this is what I have, and then of course, we will need our uh, biscuit Mary. Um, biscuit Mary 250 grams that's it super easy so I will start off by uh, melting our uh, butter unsalted again it's 200 grams is almost one block so I'm just gonna pour it in here I will melt this for three minutes. On 60C. Speed one. Then I can put away my bowls. And wash my hands. And then um, maybe if you're wondering what kind of milk, uh, what kind of cookies I use, um, it's called Marie Biscuits. It comes in um, various brands. Orang Malaysia the biasa dia kan biskut Mary. Tapi untuk orang yang, if, in case you've never tried this before, if you're new in Malaysia or if you are not in Malaysia, uh, it's a round type of biscuit that is quite um, not too sweet and not too. But I broke it up already, but it looks... <laughs> I already broke it into four, so it looks something like this uh, when it's not broken. I'm trying to put it back together. Yeah, it looks something like this, yeah. <laughs> and yes, it's been around for years. Ever since I was a child, I remember seeing this, uh, this uh, cookie. So if you get the small ones, it's even nicer. You don't have to break it up. If you get the big ones, you can break it to four. So that's what I did. I broke into four and I had it weight 250 grams. So that will come later. This one, we're just melting the butter first. And then we're going to add our chocolate and our condensed milk, our susu pekat. So this is quite nice because um, if we are to do this manually, we would have to use a very low fire and we have to stir because butter burns very easily. So bayangkan kalau kita kena buat manually, secara manual atas dapur, susah sangat nak melt butter ni sebab uh, butter senang mudah, mudah sangat hangus. Yeah. Sebab bila kita masak tu kan susah nak kawal api, kita tak tahu suhu dia berapa. So this is one of the benefits of Thermomix actually. It's got very, very precise heating and we can specify exactly as uh, as what we need. So like um, if we want to make milk for our babies, we can do 40 degrees or 37 degrees. If we want to make, uh, say, milk chocolate, we can do 50 degrees. We don't have to do the double boiler thing where you have a pot with hot water and then you put another pot and the chocolate is in top and then you have to stir constantly. No need. Tak payah buat lagi dah. Dengan Thermomix, it makes our job so much easier. So, nak buat brownies sekarang senang gila. And then nak buat gelatin pun, it's just perfect. 60 degrees C. Tak payah nak risau. 
and then we can make our sauces yang sangat sensitif contohnya uh, bechamel sauce untuk lasagna tu biasanya susah nak buat kan we have to it's butter and flour and milk and then we have to stir constantly ini pernah buat dulu long time ago and ya Allah memang sakit hati <laughs> satu dia senang sangat ni terbakar and then nak cuci the uh, periuk tu kemudian susah so the butter is already melted and now we're just gonna add our susu pekat and our our apa nama ni cocoa powder um, um, uh, biko biko Oh, I'm gonna make get a, a different spatula because this is clean. Of course, you can adjust the quantity of your susu pekat depending on your your preference. Kalau nak kurang kurang manis, boleh reduce sedikit. But I recommend always to follow the recipe. Later, I will. I will post the recipe in the comment section so that you can try it out for yourself. Okay? And then Ah yang ni Mimi dah timbang tadi. I already weighed this earlier. So I'm just going to pour it in. This is a mixture of Vico 150 grams and cocoa powder and sweetened 50 grams. So the better the quality of your cocoa powder, the richer and more chocolatey your cake batik is going to be and we're just going to mix it again for about the original recipe is 3 minutes but I think I'm going to mix it for 2 minutes and 30 I just realized the recipe is in uh, my phone which I'm using to record this right now <laughs> but it's okay I, I play by ear depending on um, what I know about thermomix so tak apa, yang ni sayang pula eh, there's a bit of uh, susu pekat here, I'm just gonna put it in. So, sayang. So you can actually open your, your lid while cooking but not at the not all the time eh. This one I know it's not yet hot. Sebab uh, lampu dia masih warna hijau maknanya dia belum panas lagi. Kalau lampu tu dia jadi merah maknanya suhu dia dah naik uh, 60 darjah ke atas. Okay. Sorry Catherine, I forgot your recipe. I'm <laughs> Basically kita nak kita nak bagi dia sebati. We're going to make it um uh, uniformly mixed together. And if we are to do this over the stove, this is also very difficult to do because it's very messy. Dala you know, nak kena jaga api and then you cannot stop stirring kalau tak nanti dia hangus and then banyak benda nak kena cuci so yang ni kita boleh duduk tak payah pakai apron pun tak apa kita punya loyang dah siap ok, it's just perfect dan kita boleh relax ok and then after this is mixed we are just going to to add our cookies through the hole and we will do reverse spoon pula ah tu orang selalu tanya reverse spoon tu macam mana ah reverse spoon tu sebenarnya sebab ok i will get a clean spatula ah, sebagai gambaran thermomix punya pisau ni dia macam ni sebelah ni tajam tapi sebelah belakang dia tu tompol so masa dia tengah pusing tu dia tengah chop atau blend tapi bila dia gustan dia tengah kacau so that's how it works so now it's moving this way because it's mixing the the, the susu pekat and the and the cocoa powder for us and the vico but later when we have our crackers in we don't want to chop the crackers any smaller we want to maintain ni biskut dah senang patah eh? tapi this is the amazing, amazing ability of the Thermomix to stir gently. Macam kita kacau dengan perlahan dengan menggunakan sudu. So, to, sebab tu dia nama dia spoon punya speed. So it will go reverse like this at 40 revolutions per minute. Macam 40 kali kita kacau dalam masa 1 minit. Uh, itu dia, itu maksud dia. So now, I'm going to set it for, I think it's 1 minute and 30 seconds. 
Boleh je adjust nanti And then yang paling penting tu kita buat dia reverse And then uh, suhu dah tak payah panaskan lagi dah Sebab ini tinggal nak kacau je And then uh, speed spoon Okay Dan yang ni kita masukkan sikit-sikit Through the hole Just like this Here that it's um like it's a bit uh, having difficulty turning. Then we help it with our spatula. Kita kacau spatula tu reverse juga. Sebab uh, spatula ni dia ada safety disc. Dia ada macam tudung, macam payung tu. Ha, jadi kita masukkan macam ni pun di masa selamat dia tak kena blend. So it's uh, the safety disc is uh, designed so that you can use your spatula while cooking. And it protects your spatula from getting caught in the blade, so it doesn't it doesn't get uh, destroyed by the blade, but we can help stir. So senang sangat. Kita punya dapur bersih, and satu benda je nak kena cuci after this, and even that the thermal mix will clean it for us. Kalau kita buat secara manual, ada banyak benda nak kena basuh dah, and then nak kena sental lagi periuk tu. Okay, so it's almost done. Just a few more seconds. So amazing, right? Guys, gila. Dan cara nak, nak kacau tu pun kita kena sengatkan dia sikit. Ah, dah siap dah pun. Just like that, it's done. Demang gila. Mimi, aku dah siap dah. Hmm. So this is how it looks like. And kita tinggal tuang je. Masuk dalam kita punya loyang. We just have to pour it into our mold. Just like that, so wonderful. So bloom ni, I never dare to make a batik cake batik before this, before my thermal mix because it's just so messy. The thought of it, walaupun dia tak perlu bakar, tapi sebab dia melekit, it's so sticky kan. So ha, huh, tak berani lah nak buat sebelum ni. Tapi bila dah try thermal mix punya method, masya Allah, jatuh cinta. <laughs> Best gila, senang sangat. Okay. And then another question that people ask me, how do I make my my uh, cake batik smooth? Tak ada apa sangat pun. You just, basically you just distribute it. Okay, you just spread it out so that you can make it even. Very simple. Macam ni dia. Lepas tu, we pour out the rest of it because at the bottom you will get more of the, um, the chocolate and less of the cookies. And then you just you just mix it with the you just press with the spatula because the TM6 spatula is is very unique. It's it's rigid enough to be able to handle um, harder mixtures like the cookies. At the same time, the end is flexible, so you can scoop out what is in the bowl. See, so when you want to scoop out the sides, you focus first on the sides, and you always uh, stir from behind a. Uh, the blunt side so that you don't damage your spatula and then you focus on the side so more on the side now and when the sides are done when the sides are done then you start to move your spatula towards the middle of the blade and then kalau ada apa yang tinggal then we can try uh, the end I'm just gonna take all the cookies first, and we will do our usual two seconds of two seconds speed done. Okay, so sayang chocolate too. Then yang chocolate yang ada ni, I'm just gonna spread it out. Now you see that the chocolate is at the sides of the bowl. Nampak kan? And I'm just gonna scrape it. There. So now, then you get all of it. Almost all of it. Maybe 99%. And while I'm smoothing this out, I'm going to do pre-clean. So I'm going to show you the before. So this is our bowl before. 
Then I will put some water. Air sahaja. Air uh, 100 uh, uh, 1 liter. Dia ada tanda kat dalam tu. So I'm just going to put water 1 liter. Ni tak ada sabun pun. Sebab kelebihan uh, prickly ni dia panaskan air tu sekali sebab tu dia senang nak 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 tarik uh, gula dengan minyak-minyak. So kita swipe, kita pergi dekat pre-clean function And then kita turn on je Kita buka je, kita activate sahaja Function pre-clean tu Kita tak perlu setting apa-apa uh, Thermomix dia akan uh, Kesan sendiri Berapa lama Masa yang diperlukan untuk cuci bowl tu So meanwhile, while doing that We will smoothen out our Our cake Just like this Tekan sikit-sikit je, jangan kuat sangat So kita nak Kek tu cantik Tinggi kan Janganlah sampai Biskut tu hancur So we just Smooth it out It's super easy Anak pun boleh buat Okay And then maybe eh, Towards the end tu Kita nak kasih lepel lagi Then we can use another Another spatula Most of it is done. And just press and scrape, press and scrape. And it will turn smooth and shiny by itself. And for this one, I'm actually going to use um, my other spatula. Just to do the final smoothing. So much a medium. And then what you do, you put this in the fridge to chill and to firm up. And the siap nanti, kita boleh potong dia and serve very nicely macam cake. So it's a wonderful uh, recipe to make in advance. So if you have guests coming, ataupun nak bagi sebagai hadiah pun bagus. Senang sangat. Ataupun kalau tiba-tiba ada ada guest nak datang, then you can have your dessert very easily. So macam tu je, gosok-gosok je macam macam buat facial kan, nak, nak gosok foundation kat muka, lotion kat muka, slow-slow je. <laughs> Sama je lah. Ha, macam ni cantik lah kan. Licin lah kan. Okay, lepas tu kita masukkan dia dalam fridge. Okay, sambil tu minat tunjuk lepas pre-clean. Ni apa jadi yang kita punya bowl. So, dia dah tarik benda tu. And then I will throw out the the dirty water. And I will use the dirty water which by now is quite warm. I can actually check the temperature now. Uh, 45 degrees. Because... The, the, the thermomix has a built-in um, thermometer. So, sekarang ni just about 45 degrees. 45 darjah air dalam ni. Suam-suam kuku. Ha. So, air yang sama, Mi akan tuang dekat uh, cover ni, dia punya lid, to wash off the susu pekat. So, macam ni je. And because the water is warm, so the butter, the chocolate, and the susu pekat tu, it comes off like this. So easy. So now I'm just going to rinse it and you'll see the, the what I mean. So kerja kita tak banyak. Bilas je, tak sabun pun tak apa. So if, you, if you're in a hurry or if you don't have enough water, so this is the lid which I just rinsed. which I also just rinsed, I didn't even soap it. So you can see how much easier our work is. Imagine if you have to do this manually, all the things you have to scrub and clean, whereas I just rinsed it. I did the pre-clean and then I rinsed one time. So kalau tak ada air, Alhamdulillah, senang sangat kerja, kan? Huh. 
kita lap dia sikit and then oh ya yeah, bila nak guna tambang mix ni kita kena pastikan dia punya pin tu sentiasa kering okey yang lain-lain tu lembab-lembab sikit tak apa tapi pin tu sebab it comes into contact with electricity we should always make sure it's dry so that part is done and now i'm going to show you how the cake batik the finished product looks like this one i prepared before the show i made this morning actually i made it around 12 o'clock so we take it out like this or maybe you can use this uh, like a mini pedestal so when you're using the the right kind of paper then it peels off very easily like this so nice okay and then i have here a nice plate and my true mix knife if you'd like one let me know and we can work some we can work something out and then you just slice it however way you want it so i'm thinking of making 16 slices so that's empat kali empat enam belas lah kan okay so first i cut into half and then i cut into another half because it's a square kan so senang nak potong This recipe is so lovely. It's so so good. Okay, and then we do the same thing. So kita potong uh, separuh dulu, agak agak macam ni. Kita tanda, we mark it like this. So we cut our brownies the same way. We mark the middle, then we cut into half, then cut into half again. So you get more or less the same size of the squares. Okay, so let's take a look at our cross section. I love this part. Oh my goodness. Cantiknya, Masya Allah. Look at that. Dahlah senang. It's so easy. And it tastes so good and it's so nice in terms of presentation okay. nak tambah lagi ke atas nak stack lagi ke saja nak stack ke atas eh. tak apa nanti tak nanti. the top is nice and shiny right let me show you and the, the cross section is also like this so I hope you enjoyed today's session of Cake Bate and Susu Pekat. Selamat berbuka puasa to everyone. Assalamualaikum and thank you.